Pan African Resources, which is a mining house, is now exploring optimal ways to bring its Manika Gold uh, projects located in Mozambique to full account. It's announced today that the process to list its Manika project as a separate entity on an appropriate international exchange has commenced with talks with Mozambican authorities. Earlier on, I caught up with the CEO of Pan African Resources, Jan Nelson. I think it's quite impo important if you look at our assets in South Africa, we are develop we are currently mining gold in South Africa mm -hmm. and we are close to putting a platinum project into production. Mm -hmm. So our focus in South Africa is on production, but we've got this project in Manica and Mozambique, which is an advanced stage. And the reason why we want to list it separately, it, it, it gives us it gives it separate focus, its own management team and it's got access to its own capital and doesn't detract from what we're doing in South Africa and therefore unlocks right. value for everybody. All right, but you already have a JSC and an AIM listing yes. uh, in Britain. How is this going to be different? Why don't you try to position the vehicle probably on your London listing, for instance? Well, we haven't told the market where we're going to list it. Um, the, stock, the exchanges we've been considering have got certain rules and regulations, uh -huh. and as such, we can't comment on that. So we can't tell you exactly which exchange, but uh, we believe it's the exchange that's best suited for this project at its And these two stage. where you have a presence don't offer the synergy? Well, it won't be in South Africa, that we can say. <laughs> but we don't want to say more than that okay. at this stage. All right. Now, apparently the company has no debts. It's unhedged. So obviously for any potential new investors, it's a, it's a good, clean balance sheet that they're looking at. Yes. But it's not productive assets thus far. So where's the value initially? In Pan-African. Well, I think in Pan Africa. In Manica. Well, in Manica. Well, I think the project there, for, from a Pan African perspective, current shareholders, we are going to realise some value from the sale or sell down of a stake. So that will use some of those proceeds to develop our project, and we might declare a special dividend. But I think for the new shareholders that will come in, is it stands separately from our production assets. So it'll get a total different re rating because it's a project that's very close to production. It, it'll, uh, and, and it's got a lot of upside potential in terms of exploration, which gets lost if you look at it in the total Pan-African perspective. Mm. All right. Now, um, you've already spent over $18 million over the last four years in exploration activities. As I'm saying, near productive assets probably yes. stopped mining in 2012. How are you going to be mining and how profitable is it going to be for you? Well, if you look at where gold currently is at well well over $1,800 an ounce, then uh, you know the economics of this project about six months ago was run at about $1,100 an ounce and it made quite a lot of money at a huge margin. So you can understand at the current margins, it makes quite a lot of money. Mm. Um, it is sitting at 3 million ounces. It has to, we have to get it up to 5 million ounces. And that's why the separate listing, own capital, own dedicated management team. All right, uh, open pit mining, because obviously a lot of people are very concerned that uh, gold mining, for instance, in South Africa has become deeper, technologically more intensive. And even though the price of gold may be looking good internationally, the capex needed for production is just literally diluting that kind of uh, profitability. How does that impact on you? Well, I think if you look at the new management team that we've put in place, and their strategy is a, quite a clever one in the fact that they're going to start on a smaller scale with open pit mining while they're still carrying on exploration, and then over a period of two years ramp that up so that they can manage the capital, get return on, on, on the mining that takes place, and plow that back into the operation and the capital. So a very nice slow build-up that mitigates all that capital right up front and gives the project a better a return. All right. Now, we do know, obviously, uh, Mozambique starting to emerge as a mining economy, but a lot of focus on coal mining to some extent, or mining, not necessarily gold. So to what extent the reserves that you've already tapped into, do you know that they're going to be particularly productive once you get in there? Well, well, definitely half of the resources in, in what we call the measured and indicated category, the high confidence category, and, and a quite a large extent of the deposits, it's very shallow. So we think we'll bring at least 50% of, of those ounces to account. We've only explored three kilometers of a potential 20 kilometers. And I think if you take that into consideration, there's still much more that can be exploited. Mm -hmm. OK, the Mozambican government, there's been some mixed signals coming through. They're of the impression, uh, certainly in terms of their conversations with the media, that Pan-Africa Resources will be building a refinery to complement the work that you're doing uh, in Manyika. Are you going to be doing that? Because the refinery for them is part of a broader job creation strategy. 
Yes, now we certainly have had discussions with the minister. We were, we were in, in the country yesterday. And I think it's clear from there and our perspective that we will not build a, a refinery. I don't think there was ever an expectation from the, from the government for us to build a refinery. What we've said to them, if, if there is refining capacity in Mozambique, obviously then we will refine our gold there. But if there isn't, then we will have to look at an alternative. And the best alternative is probably to bring a concentrate out to, to South Africa and refine it here. Those discussions are still ongoing. But I think just in terms of the exploration program we're going to be busy with, the fact that there's going to be mining happening will create those kind of numbers in terms of jobs in any case. Okay, and then lastly, just in terms of beyond Mozambique, are we going to be seeing more of Pan-Africa resources across Africa, particularly in other sort of gold mining uh, areas like the Tanzanias, the Ghanas, where the resources and the reserves exist, uh, the deposits rather, but you know they really need the mining investment? I think our focus, and, and that's one of the reasons we're doing this, is, is South Africa. We like South Africa, despite everybody <laughs> saying it's not that a good place to invest in. And I think there's a lot of opportunity because there's a lot of the major companies that are looking to, to divest. And we see that as a major opportunity. We've got a m significant strategic partner in Shanduka in South Africa. Yeah. So our focus is South Africa Gold and Platinum for the near future.